Okay, in today's exciting episode, we've got a Fujifilm XQ1. The uh, issue I had with this camera was the uh, basically all these menu functions, they just stopped working. Some of them worked, some of them didn't. Um, and originally, I actually thought it was like gunk getting in here because like this wheel was, uh, you know, acting sporadically. But in fact, it turned out that that's not the case. Um, what the problem really turned out to be was actually this cable here. Uh, just along here, it's got a bit of a crack through it. And, you know, if you could zoom in on that, which we can't, uh, you could actually see that they've actually separated. And that was sort of giving me like a bit of a false impression because when I'm testing it with the cam you know, the camera apart, it's working and then I put it back together and then it stopped working. Um, this has been an ongoing problem with this camera for a while um, and that's why I did actually initially think it was something to do with the cleaning. Um, because I think this problem sort of appeared, you know, like maybe 18 months after I bought the camera. And uh, Fujifilm, uh, you know, weren't uh, particularly helpful. They wanted to charge me uh, almost like $150 or something to fix it. Um, and anyway, that was sort of no thank you because, I mean, I spent a lot on this camera and they were saying, you know, six months out of warranty or whatever, so sort of bad luck. Um, so anyway... Um, I persisted, you know, I cleaned it, it seemed to work, and, and every now and then I just repeat the process and it seemed to work okay. So this time I had to get a replacement cable. Now, these flat cables, um, you know, fairly cheap, um, but they're sort of, they are a bit difficult to work on. Um, as you can see, they came come in like long lengths, so I just cut it down to the size that I needed and uh, just used that. Now there's a few videos you know out there and on YouTube and whatnot about how to you know like scrape away all the pins and you know you do it one at a time and whatever that's too slow for me I'm, I don't have that sort of patience so what I do is I actually use uh, one of these uh, metal nail files that works actually quite well um, if you're a little bit uh, sensible with how you use it you can sort of just hold the thing and if you hold it flat enough and just sort of rub it like that you'll actually expose the um, the pins and metal and uh, it might sort of pay just to use something um, flat just to sort of back it and if you sort of use a, a reasonable amount of uh, judgment and you don't sort of go crazy and I found it's just best just to do a little bit, a little bit and then have a look, a little bit, a little bit until you've got some nice bright uh, metal shining through there and uh, then try it out. Now the second thing to to mention is that you know they've got this backing plastic on there now this was obviously too long and with the space constraints that I had in there you know I had to sort of cut it short and cut it smaller and take a little bit off the back anyway that's actually a lot of effort so the way I would do it next time is sort of the way that uh, I did one end on this Instead of trying to glue anything to the back of this, because, you know, glue didn't really take too easily, and it's actually quite difficult to get something the right size, what I ended up doing was actually just cutting a strip of this to a much shorter length and just slipping it in behind, and then that helped, um, you know, the connections. It gives it a nice tight fit, tight enough, because um, easily to remove again, and, you know, it's the right width. You don't have to worry about it easy so there are other videos out there um, that make it well you know they've they've got a purpose if you need to solder into things and you know maybe fix brakes and whatever then you do need to like just sort of scrape the one or two but if you're actually trying to remake the cable um, yeah don't bother do it this way oh. 